the United Dem uh, Domestic Workers of South Africa, UDWOSA, um, they saying that they welcome the proposed adjustment to the national minimum wage, and uh, this could see domestic workers earning the same wage as uh, their counterparts. And this comes after new annual assessments and reviews of the minimum wage were done under the National Minimum Wage Act. Uh, the National Minimum Wage uh, Commission has issued a request for written representations on the new proposed uh, minimum wage for South Africa for the 2022 year to be submitted by next week. So uh, if you are inclined to do so, please make sure that your submission reaches uh, the relevant authorities by next week. Uh, Pinky Mashiani is the founder and president of the Domestic Workers of South Africa. She joins us now for a short conversation on this matter. Pinky, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Happy New Year, Sakina, and to Morning Live viewers. And to you too, Pinky. So, uh, firstly, what is your organization's reaction to the prospect of um, uh, this particular bump that, that could lead to better salaries for domestic workers? Uh, what you are saying, uh, I also want to put it clear that uh, this national minimum wage is not the living wage. But we are welcoming it because there are domestic workers who are still underpaid by employers. We have uh, areas where domestic workers are earning 2,000 grand working from Monday to Saturday. So to them, this uh, means a lot. But only if it's implemented uh, and enforced and the employers are complying. Because like, you know, it doesn't work if uh, it's written in black and white, it's got beautiful laws in black and white, but they are not implemented and they are not enforced. Mm. And, and, and that's the crux of the matter, isn't it, Pinky? Because, um, you know, the reality is as soon as we see uh, some of these uh, dispensations coming into play, uh, the retaliation, uh, as it were, would be to lay off workers. So let's talk about that and your concern in that regard. We are saying employers who cannot afford the, the national minimum wage, they can speak to their domestic workers and take them on a part-time basis. Maybe a domestic worker can work for three days so that she can do something else for other days to make it a better living because it doesn't help if you take domestic workers to work for you for seven days but you cannot afford to pay the minimum wage. So take for the days that you can afford and allow the domestic worker to make some other means of, of living. And uh, I also don't much believe that much that it's a layoff because many employers are affording to pay domestic workers more than the minimum wage. While we are, we are complaining and uh, having grievances about those who are underpaid, we have many domestic workers who are earning far more than the minimum wage. So it means that many employers can afford to pay, to pay better. And others, if, if, if they can afford to pay that, they just say, just because it's a domestic worker, I'm going to give whatever that I want to give. And because there's no one who's going to come and knock at my door uh, doing inspection. That's another thing. Mm. So, Binky, just in terms of uh, people retaining employment, are you concerned uh, as an organization about uh, people uh, that would be laid off and uh, may be replaced by foreign nationals who may be willing to work for a lesser wage? It's possible because some employers are doing that, of which is cruel. They dismiss domestic workers who have worked for them for 14 years, for 17 years, and uh, employ other domestic workers uh, at a cheap labor. It, yes, it is uh, uh, p possible that they will also take foreigners. But we are calling on them, the foreigners, that they must stand with us because what we are fighting for, we are fighting even for them. When we fought, when we fought for COIDA, we included foreigners, everything, minimum wage, UIF, we want them to be included. So they must refuse to take lower salary as a cheap labor and stand for the rights of the labor laws of South Africa. Pinky, you've also uh, been of the view that uh, your industry has long suffered uh, discrimination. What are the reasons offered for domestic workers uh, to earn less than most of their counterparts uh, who are also in industries that require unskilled labor? I've said this many times that Domestic work sector is a sector like no other sector because domestic workers are working as individuals and they are working for for people, individuals themselves. So those employers, they have their own rules and their own regulations. Others, they, don't, they are not prepared even to comply to the law. So that's the reason. And also, there are other employers who are taking the domestic work as an un, uh, formalized and uh, 
unorganized uh, uh, sector. That's the, the challenge where people are saying just because he's a domestic worker or working for me, you don't deserve to, to earn a living wage. So we are saying domestic work is work like all other work in South Africa. And we, we, we are saying that South Africa ratified Convention 189 because of recognition and uh, the, the role of domestic workers in South Africa. So, Pinky, what is the new proposed wage? And uh, I guess more importantly, how are you going to ensure that it is actually enforced? The new proposed wage is 23 rand 10 cents an hour, or which is an increase of 4, four rand 10 cents domestic workers as previous because it was 19 rand 9 cents. Though they are still waiting for a presentation, but in my view, we are, going, we are getting it because we've been with a minimum wage commission in a study where we're telling them about the impact of national minimum wage on domestic workers. So we are also going to work with the Department of Labor, and I'm pleading with the Department of Labor as I speak now that can they please assist domestic workers and enforce the, the national minimum wages. And they also have to educate the employers to understand what's happening. I think we need many pamphlets, flyers, and anything to get the information to the domestic workers and to the employers. So, Pinky, we also know that, you know, this sector has, uh, for a long time, been unregulated. We know that the agreements have, for the longest time, you know, just uh, been on a very ad hoc basis. Now, uh, this is the reality for many people. We also know that there are domestic workers who have accepted as little as 1,500 rand and possibly even less uh, due to the fact that uh, some employers in need of their services don't earn much. And uh, they've always had these sort of very uh, fluid, very loose arrangements going um, in this instance where people are perhaps desperate for a job, what, what needs to happen? How will you go about ensuring that uh, that part of the sector is also looked at and regulated perhaps? What's more important with the sector, domestic work sector, is to build a, a strong a, a relationship between domestic workers and employers. And we also have to work with the Department of Labor and have employers on board uh, because we, we need to sit down uh, and meet each other halfway. It's also my dream, Sakina, that one day we can have a bargaining council for domestic work sector where employers... Uh, organization will sit with the unions and, as I say, and meet each other ha halfway, as we need each other. But uh, the Department of Labor, we will work with it and we are asking it to work with us. We will provide information that is needed by the Department of Labor. It's so unfortunate that there are domestic workers who are not organized, who are not unionized, who don't know what's happening, who don't know a lot about the, uh, the, the law. But we are trying as unions to send the message out through radio stations, to, through you here. To, to get domestic workers to be updated on what is happening in the sector. And we are asking to work with the employers' organizations. I'm already working with the employers' organization, the National Employers' Labor Association, NELA. Uh, I'm also uh, starting a new partnership with other uh, employers' organizations because I, I know that in the sector of domestic work is not a sector where you can say, I'm fighting with the employer or I, I, I'll protest against my employer. It's a... a, a Except we must sit down and, and talk. Mm. Uh, Pinky, with regard to the reality of the COVID-19 situation, where we've seen uh, many companies close down, uh, we've seen many downgrade salaries or freeze salaries, and this is a reality that many of us have had to grapple with. So what would then be the realistic approach when it comes to uh, issues of wages with domestic workers in this regard? Yeah, it, it, it is very difficult for domestic workers. They were hardly hit by the COVID-19. As others, with, with their salaries were reduced and others, their days were reduced by, by the employers. Like I'm saying that we need to work with the employers because like, you know, one thing for sure that I've seen, employers need domestic workers. We have seen that during the lockdown period where some employers love the domestic workers in their property, denying them the right to go home and to be there with their children. They, will pre they prefer to keep, to keep them for, for themselves. So it shows that the importance of domestic work and to move the, the sector forward is negotiations all the way. And if we need to, we will have some protests, some demonstration to raise out our voice 
so that we can be heard. We will send the submission so it's needed. We will send out petitions. We will do anything to make our voice to be listened to. And just finally, Pinky, um, this, of course, at the moment is a recommendation by the National Minimum Wage Commission to the minister. Uh, there is still opportunity for submissions to be made on uh, the proposed new wages. What are you hoping for? I'm hoping that domestic workers are getting 23 rand 10 cents a, a month like all other workers. As I've said before, that we are like all other workers in, in South Africa. And our role is a massive role because we help the employers. We are contributing the economy of this South Africa. We make employers work to be easy. We are helping each other here. So we are hoping for the best for the domestic workers going forward. Pinky, thank you so much uh, for your time there, uh, Pinky Mashiane. And uh, she is, of course, uh, the president of uh, the domestic workers of South Africa. And as you hear there, that is the proposal that has been sent through to the minister. You do still have time to comment on this. Uh, but what it would mean if it goes through is that uh, domestic workers will now earn as much as every other counterpart in the unskilled labor sector. So so let us know your views on that as well.